you come into a prayer meeting praising the lord that song was right on time so welcome back everybody we are live on these streets and we are recording in this room so happy day after christmas y'all <laughs> we made it y'all we're on the other side um all right so before we jump in just another final hounding reminder <laughs> please sign up for soar if you haven't already um, we have we have the space, the capacity, and the will to do it. We're gonna make this happen. So good night, everybody. We're glad you have made it. Uh, we have so much to be just thankful and grateful for. I'm in a I'm in a little bit of a space cadet overflow <laughs> right now. I'm just receiving everything and just watching it all happen. So God is so good. We are uniting in worship and prayer, and we are turn. Uh, we're together in faith. He just said, "Turn something around." Okay, Lord, <laughs> we're turning some things around. Okay, we are turning some things around. So, so that's the main uh, main thing for admin. Again, y'all are welcome to join the Zoom room or just catch the replay or watch us live stream. Um, so we appreciate everybody who is participating. And again, you're welcome to invite other people to join. So with that, we're going to turn over to Nat for Tuesday night prayer. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> favorite night of the week now favorite night of the week yay all right so welcome everyone welcome 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 let's get started in prayer <sighs> mm -mm. heavenly father thank you lord thank you for bringing us here to another tuesday night to praise you worship you to speak of you to do what you'll have for us to do, Lord. Do your will, Lord, not our will. We'll, we are open and ready to receive you in all ways that you have desired for us to be here. All work. We pray that all who have ears to hear, mouth, I mean, eyes to see, and hearts and minds to receive, Lord, receive all the messages that you have for them today, Lord. We, I pray that the minds and mouths that speak here speak only of you and your truths. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So um, I, I was toiling around. Y'all know me. I'll be toiling around. Um, trying to come up with a topic. And then the Lord kind of gave me this one. He had been actually broadcasting it for a while. But, you know, I'll be doing my human thing. Okay. Uh <laughs> I'm still a work in progress. All right. Um, but so today we're going to be in Isaiah 41 through 11, right? Um, but I'm going to focus more so on the bottom part, right? But I'll read the top part. So many of us, right, we've made it over the 
hump, right, of the holidays, the, the 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 biggest part of the holidays, right? We've done all the shopping, everybody's gotten their presents. Um, the hustle and bustle of it is is gone, right? Same as with our Lord and Savior, right? There was the hustle and bustle of when is he coming? Is he coming? Or we don't know. We don't know when he's coming. What is, is it going to be like this warrior? Is it going to be a mighty king like um, David? Or how is he going to be when he gets here, right? Um, and then when he got here um, and the, you know, there was a signal of him coming, it was kind of still this peace. It was this humble peace that was still around. And so, um, but there was still the prophecy, right, that he would bring comfort to God's people. So I'm going to start reading at um, Isaiah 40 and 1 through, like I said, 1 through 11, actually, sorry, correction, 1 through 12. Um, <laughs> I just got the correction. Um, so we're going to start here. So comfort, um, and I'm reading from the NIV version, um, but feel free to read which version you're in. So um, it starts with comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. So this is speaking out to the people, right? The people of the Israelites, the people that live in Jerusalem and that they are, you know, they've been having a hard time um, being under the thumb of other people. God has also been um, punishing them, right, for their sins, the things that they keep committing, even though he has given them laws and decrees and precepts to follow, to live by, but they're still not getting the point, right? They're still being hard to each other. They're not loving each other. They're not kind. They, th they still think that you have to do things in a certain way, but he's telling them, um, that's what Isaiah is telling them from the Lord is to have comfort that um, your service in sin is over, right? And you're going to receive not only life, right? But you're going to receive an abundant life in response to it. That's what we know in the New Testament. Um, and so it goes down to speak in three, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Um, this is speaking of the coming of Jesus Christ, right? Um, that for those who are in the wilderness, those who are going through things, rest assured that wherever you are, God, if you make space for God, he will come in. He will come in and, and into that space. He will enter in wherever you are. Um, every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low, the rough ground shall become level, the rugged places, a plain and glory of the Lord will be revealed and all people will see it together for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So this is his promise to us that no matter what you're going through, no matter where you are, the sin that you've committed, he will wipe all of this away, right? This is what the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is telling us. And then it goes down to say, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fail, but the word of our God endures forever. So put a pen right there. I'm going to keep reading down, but that's where we're going to focus at right here. Six, seven, and eight. Then it goes on to say, you who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good news to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout, lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See the sovereign Lord comes with power. Uh, sorry, I had to scroll down. Um, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense, recompense, sorry, and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and he carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. So going back to six, seven, and eight, 
which is our focus for tonight, a voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are like grass and all the faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. So what we're speaking about is we've all reached into that comfort zone, right? Of the end of the years, that last week before the end, you know, some of us may be cleaning, preparing, we're writing our list, but we're the, the hustle and bustle of the year essentially is over, right? There's nothing that we're trying to feverishly get to. Um, there's nothing that we're feverishly preparing for, no more than the coming of the new year, but there's still nothing. Um, there's no urgency of, oh, I, I have to get this done or I have to get that done. It's kind of a calm period. Just take these next couple of days to do what you have to do, right? Um, but then as as also while we're doing that, we're reflecting, right? We're reflecting on what God has done for us, what we've done in response to the things that God has done, our gifts that we've received. And this is speaking out to that we, the people, as we have been going through things, if we've come out of the wilderness, we've moved into different positions, right? God has blowed on us. We've moved into different positions, right? We're still God's grass. We're still, no matter if the grass is green, if it is brown, right? In the season that we're in right now, the grass is brown, but you still know that there's grass out there. You still know that there's a promise of when God shines the light on that grass and provides water that that grass will turn green again, no matter if you... Some I've done this before, but if you cut the grass a little bit too short, right, it may get a little bald in that one spot. Um, but God will come back and you know drop some seeds there, and what'll happen? That grass will grow again. So we're like the grass of um with the grass. Surely we are, right? Because no matter what we've been through throughout this year, no matter the whether we're in the wilderness, whether we're coming out of the wilderness, no, whatever we're preparing for, God will take care of us. God will see us through to the new year as long as we recognize that we are God's grass and that we need God to to thrive, to grow, to move forward in life. There's nothing that we can accomplish without God and it stick and it stay, right? Because the word of our God endures forever. No matter what we do, we have to bring God and his word into it. Um, and so that's the word that I wanted to bring to you guys that no matter where you are, um, in your journey, whether you're at the beginning, the middle, the end, you're a believer, you're you're taking up your cross and you're walking, don't do it without God because you need him to continue going forward to the next level. You need him no matter what level you're on, whether you're at the bottom, at the valley, you're in the wilderness, you're at the top of the mountain, you've made it. Yeah, mama, I made it. Uh, no matter where you are, you need God. So as we sit in our comfort, make sure you are um, looking at what God has done for you and seeing how you can show up better for God in all that you're doing in, in response to all the gifts that he's given to you throughout this entire year. I'm going to stop there. Um, does anyone have any and see where, um, what you guys want to comment on, comment on your year, um, what God has done for you. The floor is open. Um, <laughs> so goofy. Um, God is so amazing. Um, and you talk about um, we're the grass and we can't do anything. You know, we can't forget God's goodness, right? Like for me, the message this morning was continue to pray and cover those things in prayer with the same fervent spirit that I did when I was going through, right? So some of y'all know that I was, you know, battling some things, right? Some, some spirits and, you know, I was in prayer and I'm, you know, I'm going and I'm feeling and I'm praising to the point where I need to take a nap when I'm done. Right. 
And um, now that he has brought me through that part of it, it's not that I stopped praying, but my focus went somewhere else. And then he reminded me this morning, I didn't tell you to stop praying just because I gave you a moment of peace, right? I still need you to pray over that same thing that you've been praying over because the enemy still has not stopped trying to kill, steal, and destroy. So when you talk about don't take a step of breath without God, just because he's shown you victory, the devil is stays busy. So you have to continue to, until he say, okay, you're done with this, right? We think we're done because we got a moment of peace, right? But until he clearly says, you're done with this, you have to keep praying over that thing because the peace that you've gotten doesn't mean it's complete and total victory, right? It's just maybe a, a revelation that I'm with you. I'm carrying you through, but I still need you to put your full armor of God on. I still need you to stand on my word and continue to pray because the prayer opens up faith, right? So, you know, you saying that, you know, don't take a step without God. We have to continue to remember to um, stay focused on him and all things, even when we're in our moment of peace. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Carmen. Yes, indeed. That was one of my favorite parts of this is all people are like grass and all their faithfulness. It's like the flowers of the field. So the more you are leaning to him, the more he's going to start to water down, right? And bring other seeds in. And those seeds will grow up into flowers in the field. So, But the grass doesn't go anywhere, right? The grass is still the base of it. It's just God's faithfulness and goodness that grows up in us that are the flowers of the field that other people can see off of us. Like kind of the same, I look at this, that part is the same as the fruits of the spirit, right? How people see your fruits, the flowers of the field are like those fruits that people see it like, oh, that's nice. Well, why she's so peaceful? Everybody else around here running around crazy and she's so peaceful. She's so loving everybody snapping on everybody but i know i can come over here and ask her to do the impossible and she's still gonna do it with a smile on her face how you do that how, how do you how do you maintain that well let me tell you about jesus so when you slide in and be like let me tell you about jesus let me tell you how jesus showed up and showed out get your popcorn ready isn't that right carmen <laughs> anyone else Oh, I thought, Sharon, I'm sorry. I thought you were saying sorry. It was just your thumbs up. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that, so that um, I absolutely agree. I was looking at this from another perspective, which is um, just the way that, that this is positioned, especially if you are um, preaching and teaching. <laughs> preaching and teaching. Um, so when it starts off with um, comfort and, and God literally comforting his people. And then he shifts to an action for them to take after you've come through this season of comfort. Um, verse three, when he talks about the voice cries, and we know again, um, John talking about in the wilderness, preparing the way for the Lord. Um, and every valley shall be lifted, every mountain shall and hill be made low and all of those things. But the, the reasoning behind it, like, it's like, he says all these, like God says all these amazing things, comforting his people, right? But then he kind of reminds us of his power right quick. And, and we need that. You need that balance because a lot of us, when we receive, we receive comfort from the Lord, sometimes, again, we treat him like grandpa. <laughs> we forget the power that comes from the comfort. And even in the comfort that he gives us, it, it shows us his power, right? It shows us his love and his mercy and his grace. But when it says um, the voice of God stands forever in, in my, my Bible, that's the caption, voice says cry. And I said, what shall I cry? Because listen, all flesh is grass and all this beauty is like a flower and all those things, right? What do I say after I've been comforted and I've come through something? What do you want me to say? Um, but then he gives you instructions. Verse nine, go up on a high mountain 
herald, tell of the good news. That's what you're supposed to do. And a lot of us don't do that. We, we go through the period of comfort. <laughs> he reminds us of who he was in comforting us. But there is a thing that we have to do to activate and we forget that, right? So the thing is for us to then go herald of good news. This is why it's so important that we're testifying of his goodness. We're testifying of, you know, when God gives you comfort. And it, again, doesn't mean that the situations are going to be perfect. To Carmen's point, the fact that you have to pray over something and you still have to pray over that thing until it's all the way gone, right? Um, but he's calling us to go and herald of the good news. Verse 12 and verse 13 is for those of y'all who don't understand the authority that the Holy Spirit has. <laughs> he talks about who he is, who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand and marked off the heavens with a span. Again, it's, it's God showing you. He starts out with his comfort. He gives you an instruction, but then he's reminding you of who he is and his authority and all of that. And even in knowing his authority, we have more comfort. I have more comfort knowing who God is and than believing who I am, <laughs> right? And so I just love the way that he's, he's positioned this with the heart, the heart of Jesus, the heart of God, where he shows you his, that comfort. And again, this is coming to these people. It's saying their warfare ended and their iniquity is pardoned. This was coming at a time of great sin. So even for, for us or for me, right? Just I'll just speak for myself, coming out of a period of great sin and yet God is forgiving me and comforting me. But then he's telling me, go tell, go and herald the good news and then reminding me of the authority that he has in my life. It's just amazing. So again, we always tell people, go back and read the word for yourself because the more that you read these passages, God's gonna show you what it is that's in your life that you need to see. What I see ain't gonna be what Nat sees, ain't gonna be what Makisha sees, but somehow he always brings us all together. I see this through the eyes of a teacher and a preacher on what you're supposed to do when you've gone through a season, when you've gone through a season where he's shown up through comfort. And I just thank God for this lesson. Cause that's what I had. Amen, amen, yeah, amen. Listen, I already know. There's some great stuff coming. I just know I can't move without him though. Like that's that's what right. it me. Like it's it's big. <laughs> don't go without I'll take small. I don't even yeah. need big. Yeah. I listen, Lord, I will take your crumbs. Right. It's yeah. Like I don't even I'm sorry, like I'm not trying, you know, I'll take his crumbs because I'll take whatever you give me. It's whatever a, you give me. Out there that says any way you bless me, any I'll be you satisfied. Me. Yeah. And I'm I'm at that point, but I know just he's that's what he's been forecasting. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> he was like, but don't forget, okay, because it's about to get real lush and plush around here, okay? But don't forget about me. Yeah. Don't forget where you who who Ooh. brought you through the wilderness. Don't that's forget that. who made the the mountains move and leveled right. out. Don't forget that right you've been stepping out here you've been spreading the good news you've been standing on the mountaintops proclaiming it your flowers everybody's like how is she doing what she's doing right this is my testimony by the way um <laughs> so uh you know because it that's how it was yesterday at at christmas dinner right y'all know i told y'all i eat different now but the family don't okay so there were ribs and chicken and um, like fried chicken, baked um, barbecue chicken, and um, what else? Oh, and I told I can't. I'm not eating shrimp and stuff like that right now. They had shrimp, crab legs. Um, I was like, I was like, I can't have none, Lord. He was like, No, <laughs> no. I was, I was, it was like, No. So I was like, Okay, all right. They they got all these vegetables though. So let me eat all these vegetables. And everybody's like, You don't even want to try it? No, I'm okay. No, I'm okay. I, listen, y'all, y'all don't understand. I don't. I know what my father is capable of, and do I want to see his wrath? Absolutely not, not at all. So I'm, I'm. Listen, I'm sold out in that aspect. Like I know who God is. I believe His word. So no, I'm not going back. I'm not finna roll back on what He's told me to do. I'm going 
forward. But like I said, he's forecasted. Plush is coming. Plush and lush is coming. Don't forget who I am. Like, don't, don't make sure you getting up every day, still spreading the word. Make sure you still diving into the word. Cause sometimes we forget when we, you know, we're not in the struggle no more. We don't be reading. We don't be trying to find out. We're like, oh, we got it figured out now. You don't. You still need me to be able to come and water your grass. So that it will grow tall and lush and beautiful. You still need me to shine my light onto your grass so that it, it will look the way it needs to look. You still need me. You still need me to come blow on it so that I blow the seeds that grow up because that's one of the things in the grass, right? There are seeds that grow up and you need it to blow across so it will get rid of those bearing spaces. It will blow those pretty flowers that'll grow up and everybody be like, oh, y'all yard is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You still need God no matter what season you are in. So, yeah, sorry, I detoured. <laughs> um, does anyone else want to share? I was just going to add, you know, this, somebody used to say this to me, um, you know, everything that, you know, those saying everything that glitters is not gold. And then somebody once said to me, um, the grass may look greener on the other side, but it still has to be mowed, right? So if you start to think about that, it's exactly what Natalie just said. All of the things that you have done to take care of that of that lawn, so that it is growing that whatever it, it it's really recognizing where your strength comes from, recognizing who gives you the the power to move forward, recognizing who you're really serving, and and that's the reality of it. Is it still has to be cared for? I mean, we didn't get here by ourselves. There is unconditional love that has been provided to us every day. And we have to be deliberate every day about accepting it and moving forward in his presence. And that's really, you know, how I how I see it. And that's what came to mind when you started to talk about it. The grass may be greener. It may, but it still has to be fertilized and mowed and watered and all of those things. And that's what gives us the growth that we desire to walk with God. That, that, is, that is him just holding us. When we can't stand up on our own, that's him holding us. You know, I, I think about when I went to Cayman and, you know, the beauty of that island and just, you know, that, that old um, image of the footprints and walking in the sand and the water comes and washes it away. It, it, that is the epitome to me of God carrying us through everything and washing our sins away often because we, we make mistakes, we fail, we, and, and we have to, have to figure out how to get up and keep going because without him, there is no us. I mean, honestly, the love that, that God has provided to us is just, <laughs> the kids say to the moon and back I mean it's further than that right so just the comfort in knowing that we have a father who loves us unconditionally and all he asks us to do is just you know come to him and ask he's just amazing amazing and I am just so grateful for his his love and his his blessing and you know every now and then I get tapped because I do something I ain't got no business doing and I appreciate that too because that's where we grow right that's where we continue to, to learn and I, I'm just in awe and just just so many things that I am just grateful for and looking forward to focusing on the new year it's so funny, Rico got us all watches, got Gabriel a watch, me a watch, him a watch. We didn't need no watches. But it was about the message that he wanted to share with the family. It's time that we, one, 
get serious about moving forward and walking with God. It's time for us to focus on being one as a family. It's time for us to settle on a church home. It's time for so many things in our lives that we have to do as a family. Like I said, we didn't need a watch, but it wasn't about the watch. It was about the fact that he wants us to be in a different direction as a family. So I am just so grateful for everything that God is doing in my family, because this is where it starts, right? This is where it starts so that, you know, as a family, we can move forward. We may, Gabriel may be behind me or behind, doesn't really matter. What happens is there is a start there's a start and the foundation has been set. And I'm just, again, just humbled, humbled, humbled. I couldn't get through my cards without crying yesterday because there was just so, the presence of the Lord was just so, so thick in, in here. And it was just amazing. And I am grateful. I am humbled and grateful for the father who continues, continues to love me and my family in spite of what we do. So the grass still has to be fertilized and mowed and all that watered and all that good stuff. Yes. Oh, thank you, Audrey. And this is water in my cup, by the way. Yeah. Cup num number five, okay? Amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Mm, that was beautiful. I love that. Does anyone else want to share? Real quick, we have to give a shout out to Sheila. She's watching in the Facebook group and she wasn't able to see that. Well, she was asking who that was. That was Audrey speaking. I don't know how to spotlight people. Don't worry. She she sent she sent her sister a text message and told me put me on duty. So oh, uh, thank you. That's when, yeah. So when Audrey was spot talking, you guys computer probably shifted and changed. Y'all probably like what is going? On? <laughs> thank um, you, uh, my my sister, you know, <laughs> it's the baby. You know, they try to tell us what tell me what to do. So I have to comply, right? So. Appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> So I guess it's my time to talk, right? I was trying to to I, I was trying to give you guys an opportunity to um talk and all that stuff. So as you guys know, um this Christmas was a little bit different for us. Um this year, you know, my daughter got married, so we're learning to we're learning to share her, right? Um it, it it's it's different because <laughs> all day everybody was texting me like where's Ariel where's Ariel when she's coming when she's coming and um me trying to explain to them hey Ariel has a different you know Ariel life has switched and changed so she she's with us with Thanksgiving so now she has to go spend time with her in-laws for Christmas but it was different but even in that moment, God still allowed me, my sister, my and my niece to, because you guys know from the coming out of the wilderness, Teresa's, you know, her testimony won't get into it. That's not my story to tell, but you guys remember it. Her, her situation has, you know, changed. So I was able to spend time with my niece and my nephew and my sister, you know, um, so it was just different and we had, we had a, a lovely time with, the, we ended up going over to the in-laws house. So we had a lovely time. They welcomed us and all that stuff. It was this amazing thing. And so, but my point is I went to the gym today. So in my mind, I'm like, God, I didn't have a chance to spend time with my, my, da, da, da. you know, the pity party. Right. But when I go to the gym today, right. Um, we're, because you already know, God always sending people to talk to me because I guess I'd be wearing stuff like this and drawing attention, right? So I'm on the elliptical machine and 
this one, this lady comes and tr my sister, Teresa, she's at, she's on the bike. So of course we're country Mississippi. We're talking to each other. There's a treadmill in between and Teresa's on the bike. So she's like, Teresa's like, how long do you have? I'm like, I just started, you know what I'm saying? But the lady thought I was talking to her, right? So she, she started, she was like, are you talking to me? I was like, no, I'm not talking to you. She was like, oh, okay. But that started a conversation. But she was like, well, how was your Christmas? I was like, it was okay. You know, the rain and all that stuff. And, and she's like, my Christmas was horrible. I was like, what? Um, My 71-year-old grandmother had an accident, had to be rushed to the hospital, broke several ribs, and her car um, ran ran into almost ran into someone's house, and and I'm saying to myself, and you around here complaining about not having to spend time with Ariel when someone and she was like this this was the worst Christmas of my life, and I was like, oh my god! So now, never met this lady. She's opening up to me. What do you, what, what do you do in this situation, right? You know, wh what do you what do you say? How do you comfort in this situation? So, you know, I was just asking her, I was like, do you need anything? Are you guys okay? She was like, yeah, I'm okay. You know, this was just horrible. Just some, just a really hard time for me and my family. And she's a diabetic. And so it's going to be hard for her to heal. So she's just going on and on and on. Just saying to myself, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for my little pettiness, right? When somebody is going through something so severe and so much more. So it just goes to tell us, it goes to show me that even what we have, we still need to be a good student and be grateful for and be content in, right? Situation is going to change. Things is going to change. Your kid's going to get married. People's going to move on. Things are going to do different things. But in the process, you still have to give gratitude and remember that God is still going to take care of you. God still is there. And he has never left you because he is Emmanuel. He is with us. So, so I had to comfort this lady. I didn't know her from Adam. I don't even know her name, but she felt so open to talk to me, to tell me everything that was going on in her life at that moment. And like, I'm like, God, like, here we go. Here we go. Here we go again. A God divine opportunity to just connect with someone, you know? So, that was, that was, that's, 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 that's my story. Um, so today, I, today I'm just like, okay, God, um, I guess you just got me out here being your agent, secret agent, right? Unfortunately, I can't be secret. I'm from walking around saying God is dope, right? So, I mean, <laughs> that is bringing the attention, you know, to, to people. And it, it just goes to show you just, and everything you have to count it all joy, you know, because God, even in, even in, when she said the, the, the grass is brown. Even the grass is brown. God is still taking care of you. He's still nourishing you. He's still feeding you. He's still doing everything that he needs to do, even in the brown, even in the wilderness, right? With the children of it, walking in the, in the wilderness, 40 years, their clothes, their shoes, all this stuff. So even in that moment, God is still faithful. So that's my story to today. You guys know I always have stories. So I'm going to unpin myself because my sister's probably going to ping me. Okay. Oh <laughs> this is so much confirmation. Makisha, thank you for sharing. Um, and Shelly, you said it earlier, you know, about sharing our testimony. And I shared something with some of you ladies earlier about a, a, a young lady that was going through some things. Right. And, and, you know, she was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to be an imp I don't want to have empathy. I'm, I'm tired. And God showed her there's something other people are going through something different. Right. And what I went through this morning, confirmation number three, I saw something that caused me to go back. Right. And then I start, like you said, Makisha, the pity party. Oh, Lord. Like I saw what I saw. Right. So immediately they took me back to where I thought we were going back to. Right. And I'm just, oh, God. oh and then I'm sitting there crying like, OK, Lord, I, I'm just being honest with you about how I feel. And he revealed to me in that moment. I saw what I saw. But the context of what I saw was not what I thought. So that 
when I went into prayer and he immediately turned it around. Right. And he said, go into prayer. And I'm thinking I'm praying for what I saw. Right. And during that whole thing, he flipped it back and was like, I got this other person you praying for. This is for you to have faith. And he showed me in such a miraculous way that he is standing by me. Don't worry about this other thing. I still need you to focus on you. And so when you said your story, your testimony, Makisha, about the pity party, I'm like, the girl went through the pity party. I went through the pity party. And God said, we're going to soar in 24, right? So it's time to, the first step that we take is not the pity party, but to say, okay, God, what we going to do, right? That'll with the popcorn. Okay, I'm feeling some kind of way. God, what you about to do? Right. Instead of the pity party. And if we're going to soar, if we're going to elevate, if we're going to make it to that next level, we can't be on the pity parties no more. Right. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, one of my biggest shifts happened when I stopped doing that. Right. Stop leaning into the feelings. Right. I allow the feelings to the emotional triggers to actually alert me that there's something about this situation that's not sitting well with me right and that's what you take to God like hey God I, I see that right and it made me feel this way can you tell me right Father, what is it? Or do I need to just let it go? But I, I want to give this whole situation to you. I, I desire understanding of it to understand why this is tapping me the way it is. However, I do understand that not everything is meant for me, right? Like it, it's not meant for me to come into that situation. It's not meant for me to see or feel what I've seen in that situation because sometimes we see things based off of our own trauma and our own stuff that we've already experienced, right? But there's it could be something totally different going on in that situation. Like what you said, God told you, like, no, I got that. But did you not see what you did? You, you see what you what happened with you? How you just got completely all oh, bent out. You stepped out of position because of something that somebody did when I need you to learn how to stay still, right? Stand tall, stand firm with whatever happens, right? And that was one of those things that kind of shifted me. And I'm not going to say I'm perfect in this aspect, but when I realize, like, when I can break free of the emotional issue, because, you know, we all have that, right? Something happens and, like, we ready to, what? No, she didn't. Hold up. Let me... I'm about to tear it down, right? Or, you know, I can't believe they did that to me. I would never do that. Now you, like you say, you're crying on the floor. And then I was saying, you'd be like, hold up. I'm a King's kid. Like my father taught me better than this, right? And you start speaking over yourself, speaking his word over yourself and you stand up and then you take it to him and you leave it there. The whole thing, the emotional trauma that came from it, the situation, what's happening over there. You ask for what you need from what you think you need and then let his will still be done. Right. Cause I'm going to give you what I, I think I need, but I, I've been to your will. Right. So I ain't even going to worry about it. This is what's going to come from it. And that's that. Like, and moving on. And moving on, which is and getting the popcorn. Well, let me see how God gonna work this one out. It's gonna be good. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about soaring, um, if eagles, and we always relate back to eagles, especially when we think about soaring, is because really of their perspective. Mm -hmm. But an eagle either soars or they glide. When you flap your wings, you use up a lot of energy. I glide. <laughs> I'm not flapping my wings because I'm not burning a lot of energy to do anything. So you have to get to a, a point where, where you're in order to have a clear and full perspective on some things, right? You have to be able to just glide through some situations and not flap where you're responding to it. You flap like you're crazy because you want control, but you won't have control. You just be tired. So you have to just let some things be and just glide through the situations. You got to let things play itself out. So I'm in that mode of 
even Keisha, that meeting, I, I was like, oh, he's showing me some things. He's like, let me play some things out. So I'm just in watch mode, right? Because I need my perspective to be very, very clear. And it's the same thing in life. It's the same thing mm -hmm. on the job. It's the same thing with relationships. It's the same thing with ministry. I'm just sitting back and I'm watching so I can get the full perspective, but I'm not flapping my wings, losing energy at it. I'm just letting, I'm just, I'm just gliding. So, you know, I, I'm also, I also learned the lesson of um, this is so crazy because I was just with Karen like this whole weekend and we were she shared and I won't do it here because she, she'll have to come back in, but she had some revelations about coming out of the wilderness and what it looked like in 2024 and the actual things that some of us have to deal with but it literally is again it goes back to are you flapping your wings and wasting your energy or burning up energy trying to soar or are you just ready to just glide 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 requires a different level of trust glide requires you to move in silence mm -hmm. <laughs> glide glide requires you to allow god to take full control of some things that's why i called out verse 12 about the holy spirit and the authority and the power mm -hmm. of God is in these situations because again a lot of us we we tend to we get in there and we flapping like crazy trying to figure out who, how you're going to get to a or how you're going to get to b and you know on all of those things but you've got to you're going to have to learn if you really want to soar this this year you're going to have to figure out how to just reserve and 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 just glide through some things glide through some things because when you change your perspective then to Carmen's amazing point then things look a little bit different. The lens get cleaner, right? Mm -hmm. the th things just look very, very different. So from my perspective, at whatever height I'm at, I can pull all the way back and say, I see it, Lord. You can't say that if you're just burning up energy and flapping your wings to situation. And that's for the folks who talk about eagle and soaring and all those things. That's why it's important to know which bird you are. So stop it. So you, so you out here, so you out here, you out here <laughs> Keisha. confirming stuff because I was asking the Lord, why did you choose out of all the animals in <laughs> the entire kingdom? Yes. You chose an eagle. And yeah. when I start reading that, reading up on how eagles respond and how they move yeah it, it just amazes yeah. me and even like their rebirth okay because then i'm gonna be talking about what i'm like mm -hmm. their rebirth processing when they what they do to their cell i mean like yes. that whole process of life and how they manage the storm like yes when yeah. i saw like when i was just like why did you choose the eagles? But once I start reading the different characteristics mm -hmm. of eagles, I'm just like, man, they're like one of the most, they're, they can go so high, up 10,000 feet and fly and still see. Their and still, eyes. yes. It is just, mm -hmm. um, so Shelly, stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Makisha, that's why I had to cancel that meeting. <laughs> Cause and, and one, one of the things that, one of the other characteristics that kind of stand out to me about the eagle is the fact that when there's a storm, mm -hmm. he goes higher. Yes, I all the way above it. All the way above it. Yes. All the way above it. So, and that, again, if it's still important, if we're soaring and there's a storm, flapping's just going to keep you right in the mix. Yes. You got to figure out how to rise above it. Yes and stand in it because you're not you're not alone we've already established that right yes so who are we gonna trust we're gonna trust ourselves or are we gonna trust our father yes isn't that amazing and we're gonna become some zoologists in a minute because one thing on, I, I learned about the eagle too audrey when you said and i don't even know why i read where i read this or why i learned it but another thing the eagle does when y'all talk about how high he goes is when the eagle is under attack it will fly to those heights because it can still breathe at those yes. heights where the thing mm -hmm. that's attacking it cannot and it just falls off of it yes yep. you can't reach 
And everybody isn't an eagle. I just let me just be clear. Everybody isn't. This is where people get get messed up because you know they, they it it is it is it's exhausting. <laughs> it's lonely. <laughs> I'm not traveling in a pack, right? Everybody isn't an eagle, which means that each of us. We still we 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 still are chock full of some amazing gifts and talents that the Lord has you know a design He's designed us and so um so just I mean if you're a raven, you're still a blessing. If you're a raven, you you understand like it 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 is. Don't get caught up in oh God. I hate to say this for whoever's gonna watch this. Don't get caught up in the title please don't go research your animal what do you call those like your animal spirit please don't that's please your animals yeah spirit animal please don't hear what i am not saying okay right my spirit animal is the holy spirit <laughs> okay there is no i'm not saying the eagle is my spirit animal i'm saying i have the perspective of an eagle it's very mm -hmm. different i flow like that that's but that's just me but if you're a raven you're still important because you are feeding. You're you're blessing others. You're still mm -hmm. there's still value in everything that you do, but for those of us who want to soar, those of us who want to go a little bit higher, those who those of us who are who are you know, we are shifting into harvest season in our lives. You can't even get to harvest if you haven't planted some real seeds. <laughs> if you weren't planting seeds in 2023 along with us, you don't expect to be harvested in 2024, right? Keep planting the seeds and watering it. <laughs> Water your grass, right? Be faithful. Be faithful with what he's giving you so that you can harvest. But you got to have the right perspective where you're going to get called out. When things start looking good is when the enemy is very busy. I don't tell anybody what I'm doing. I just don't. Right? The minute you say it, he's like, oh, okay then. <laughs> now I know where to attack. You gotta be, you gotta be very careful about what you do. But we're gonna harvest together and we're soaring together. We just gotta get our our and and then plan. and then you said, and then you said, um, uh, uh, I remember our pastor preached about don't be the chickens because you said the pack, you said pack. Yeah. Because chickens, they have a pack and they, yeah. they flock together and they, they can only go so far. So make yeah. sure that you're not a chicken, you know what I'm yeah. saying? You know, the fowl, cause you, you, you and your little crew and your little squad, yeah. right? You get caught up in your little squad and your crew. Yeah. You know, and, and you're not influencing, you're not doing anything. You just, I'm with my, my, with my squad, right? And you're not building, you're not doing anything, you're not pouring into each other. Mm. And, and and it's just, we're just squad up to do That's nothing, right. you know? So right. those, those are chickens, you know? And you, we, we flock together and we just make a bunch of noise and we only go so far and, and that's it, you know? So uh, let's, let's not be chickens in 2024. Let's right. really whoever you, you know, Really yeah, figure go out feed somebody know. like that. That's gonna be my question. Like, who did you bless today? That's yes. I mean, mm -hmm. who did you bless today? I don't. And if seriously, like, who did you bless today? And you've got to do this in your household. <laughs> I'm not saying you're gonna convert your household, but you gotta, you gotta, you, you will, you gotta, right? You, you will though, right? Right? They start seeing them flowers. They wait Come a on. Mama, mama <laughs> shining over here. Hey. Amen. Well, you've been talking about Amen. to come around. Wait a minute. Come come around here with the Bible, reading, praying, worshiping, right? There's a difference. You know, it was something that God gave me this week, right? There's a difference between believers, right? Yes. Who believe in Jesus Christ and those who have picked up their yes. cross. Yes. And are following him and doing what the word says and being um sowers, right? Yes. Of seeds of the good news, right? We're sowing, all of us um, have been sowing seeds in different places, doing this. We're walking, sowing the land, cultivating our land and territory that he's given us, right? He's given us little, right? For us to have, take and take that little and hopefully one day it'll prosper. But 
No matter if it doesn't, right? I'm satisfied with this. I'm satisfied to have this territory to throw these seeds out because I can see it. I see, I, listen, I can see the little, what do you call those little um plants that little they, they eat those now? I can see the little buds coming up. Okay? <laughs> I see the buds. I see them off of people. People who was like, oh, I'm not doing this, but I, I see them talking now in a different way, right? Because I've been praying about everybody. You tell me something, I'll be like, mm, okay. I'm a, I, I hit my I hit back and I start praying. Okay, I don't tell you, I don't tell everybody I pray about them, but I do, and that's why I be getting attacked all the time. But listen, they be they be getting frustrated attacking me because I don't know why you keep, keep please keep attacking me because all he do is make me soar higher because that let let me know y'all oh y'all really paying attention. Okay, well good, I'm glad y'all watching. Hope y'all got some popcorn because it's about to get real entertaining over here. But yeah, I, I could see the buds off of people from the seeds and the prayers and the, you know, the the things that God has been doing and all of us. And I'm like, <laughs> come on, God, like, you should be just, God just be showing out all the time, all the time. So know where you are, right? When you go back to reflect, when you're watching this, know where you are. Have you been sowing seeds? Have you really been um, reading and, and, and speaking about what you're learning, right? In the word, are you speaking of that? Are you, um, is your life reflective that you're in the word, right? Because it should reflect that you shouldn't be coming out of God's word, spending time with Jesus and snapping on everybody. Okay. You shouldn't yeah. be going to work and still speaking the same way, still showing up the same way. You should show up a different way just by spending time with Jesus. What did I tell y'all? Was it yesterday, Monday? Yeah. Jesus came through, changed the whole atmosphere of my house last week. My kids got up and they was like, we going to church today because the atmosphere was different. Like when you hang out with Jesus, you have no choice but to change. He changed a, a, a murderer into one of the greatest apostles that, that wrote, what, like half of the New Testament, right? Just by coming to visit him one time. One time, right? He visited, changed his whole life perspective. So you mean to tell me you reading in the word and you ain't changed too? You you just a believer, my love. You're just a believer. You, you're not you're not following, you're not doing right. You just pop, 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 right. You just pop, clucking it and chucking, okay? You're not really, you're not really there, but. Start doing what the word says. Start really allowing it to get down in you. And I promise you, you're going to be changed. You're going to be budding out here too. You're going to have flowers all throughout your grass, all throughout your yard. Okay? All throughout it. Listen. Yeah. Um, Sharon, is there anything that you want to say? That's my mama. <laughs> She's like, y'all went, right. went to birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This thing, because we soaring, right? But we have to let everybody know everybody ain't gonna soar on eagle's wing because you ain't you, you, listen, ain't, you ain't conditioned birds, to breathe that high either. Because right. it, it's 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 hard up here. Don't it's don't very different. It. And like it's I different. said, it's, right? You gotta be not conditioned. all eagles. <laughs> we yeah, are not you all to... eagles. But if you're not an eagle, it's because he has assigned you to be closer to the ground. Okay, and you're closer to the ground because you he needs that perspective, right? Mm -hmm. He needs you to operate closer to the ground. So again, I I don't I don't uh, I don't um, I'm not a fan of uh, what do you call it titling myself or naming. I'm just sharing my characteristic, and you can see it in how I work, live, speak, preach, teach. It is it is a part of my nature, right? So I'm not saying let's co don't copy Shelly because I'm <laughs> please don't I got it together. I don't. Okay, I don't. I'm I'm operating on grace every minute, every second. But if you're not, if you're a, if you're a, if you're another bird, I can't think of the other birds right now. Now, but if you're another bird, it's because you have been selected to be closer to the ground, so that you can you can work in this kingdom business in that way, and that's a blessing. So please don't take it any other way. Eagles don't call themselves eagles. I don't have to call myself a leader. I just lead. Right. You understand? You could, be eagle. you could be. You just ain't conditioned to fly that high either. Yeah, so it might be it might be being groomed. 
And yeah. maybe 2024 is your year of being groomed to lead or groomed to serve or, you know, whatever that is, right? Maybe mm -hmm. that's that's what it is, but you have to, you're gonna have to shed some, some <laughs> you're gonna have to shed some things. You're gonna have to stop being afraid of operating outside of your comfort zone if you really wanna soar. Like Makisha said, like, you know, being chickens when you're in that, it's the small group mentality. We were built to reach many, many people. How? Well, through the very gifts and talents that he gave you that you have. You know, you ain't doing me a favor because I'll do it by myself. You understand? I'm doing the work, okay? But he has gifted every single one of us. And, and if you want to be lush and plush to, Nat, to Nat's point, you have to be on the streets where people are. You can't be hiding in your house saying, I'm not on Facebook when you're on TikTok. Like, that makes no sense to me. Please don't play with me, okay? You, you can't be hiding. You got to go where people are. You got to go where the need is or you'll be celebrating 2024 saying, oh, I tried, it didn't happen. And we're gonna be celebrating, the rest of us are gonna be in harvest. But we want everybody to come along. We wanna help people, we wanna teach people, we wanna guide you. But y'all, this isn't for you to just come and take, you have to come and serve. This is different, right? You've got gifts and I know you have gifts. I'm gonna tell you what he said. If you don't do what he said, then that's between you and Jesus, okay? You have to be willing to serve. And it's through your serving that he's going to bless you. That's the math. That's the heavenly math. That's how it works. If you're not tithing, you're going you're gonna to see some problems financially. But it's not just tithing. It's your talent and your time. And if you're not doing that, if you're, if you're hoarding those things, right, then my harvest is going to look different than your harvest. I won't be lush and plush like that. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta serve to be lush and plush heaven's gotta see you put some work in mm -hmm. or it's not gonna it's, you're not gonna be able to keep it you might get it but you ain't gonna keep it mm -hmm. all right i'm sorry sharon that's my last uh words of testimony <laughs> <laughs> right now right <laughs> <laughs> i'm just i've been locked up for a few days y'all <laughs> Well, I have to start out by saying to God be the glory. I thank God for allowing me to come on on tonight. And um, I'm I'm overwhelmed, but in a happy way. Um, I understand that the joy of the Lord is my strength. But on last week, I know that I was going through some things. And um, you guys have like addressed a lot of the issues that um, I was kind of facing. It is hard when you're you are an eagle. And um, you want to be like the chickens and have other eagles maybe soaring with you, but it's a lonely journey. Um, but God is there with us. Um, and um, sometimes I like to be encouraged. Um, I think about, you know, when God lay people on my heart and I'm praying for them. And then when I'm going through, I don't get the calls or whatnot, but I know God has me. Um, but it's still just a process. And I know that um I'm 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 in a place where I think I just need some more guidance and some more direction, but I don't know where to turn. I know to turn to God, but I don't know where to turn. I just need people, I guess, to speak life into me or just help me see where I'm at and help me to go where I need to go next in Christ. So um, you guys have said a lot. Everything has been good. And I stopped uh, chatting and I stopped doing my things, uh, the little reactions, because I was really paying attention and I forgot. But this has been so good. And I'm, I'm grateful to God um, for each of you and everything that you have shared on tonight. And I know that God has gifted me and um, he's planted me. And I have no idea of what he has in store for me, but I do know that I, I love him and I want to trust him and I want to be in his will. Amen. Well, Sharon. Amen. Mm. Amen. You have lots and lots and lots of uses if you're really willing. I'm willing. <laughs> Audrey's on mute. <laughs> Audrey will rescue me. <laughs> if you're really willing, lots and lots and lots and lots of uses for real. Lots and lots of people that that could um that could use your help. And um and that's what I, I'll be talking to Makisha about 
how do we build out some some free stuff, free webinars, use Zoom, let's create some programs and Carmen in my head, like the same thing that I was doing for the women, the sister circle is please. the same thing that we need to do here. Mm, but it's please. going to require, it's going to be sacrifice of people's time and their talent yes. given to other people. And everybody mm, ain't for that. Yeah. We want to soar, but we want to hoard. You cannot, mm, yeah. <laughs> it's not going to work if you're trying to hoard. Okay. If he's going to pull it out. It's like people are holding on so tight. And I'm like, listen, you. <laughs> okay. Com confession, confession. Because <laughs> I shared with you guys that have been struggling with tithing. And he revealed some things to me and I'm starting to move in that direction. And then today I'm reading a devotional and um, it's talking about, you know, blessing people who are poor and, you know, in, in many areas. Right. And I'm like, OK, well, how am I supposed to bless people? Right. Like what you want me to do? Like, <laughs> I don't even know. Right. And um, I was always in my little shelter. Right. In my closet. Like I, I could be happy sitting at home, not talking to anybody, not doing anything and just not dealing with people. Right. Mm -hmm. And and my daughter comes in and I'm getting ready to take her over her friend house. And she come in and she's like, mommy, can you pick up such and such? Because her daddy just ain't feeling it right now. And she, I get this look on my face and she said, is that a no? And I said, well, I'm not going to take you and not take her. I said, but you know, it'd be nice if other people's parents, because I'm the taxi lady, right? And I'm like, it'd be nice if other people's parents want to take kids somewhere. And I'm like, why well, I always got to be the one? And he said, tap, tap, tap on the shoulder. Didn't mm. you just ask me how you mm. supposed to serve? And for those who are in need, and even to me, we think about people in need about, you know, they don't they, they don't have food, they don't have diapers for their baby, but it's even in the small things. Yes. This young girl wanted to fellowship with her friends Right, there could have been a blessing in them yes. getting together, and I'm yes. sitting here with attitude because I got the I'm, I'm leaving the house anyway, but I got an attitude because I got to go pick up somebody else's child. And he was like, "You just read two seconds ago about how you gonna serve." And it, I told y'all sometimes he'd be slow walking me before he take me right. And he was like, "I just told you," so I had to ask for forgiveness. Like, okay, and then I had to put a happy sm smile on my face. Like, okay, you said don't do this begrudgingly either. Right. So I had to pray real quick and get in the right man. Like, I'm going to go pick up this child and it's going to be OK. Right. Because I'm all like, you know, I don't like to drive in the dark and she stay all up in the woods. And <laughs> So when God asks you to serve, I just want the people out there who looking and listening and whatever. It is not about the big thing. Sometimes it's about the very little things that when he asks you to do something, we when it's small we don't think about god as being in that thing but he is in every single thing no matter how small it is so yeah that was my confession and and, and confirmation when you talk about tithing your time right yes. Your time yes so yeah yeah he said because i said i could sit down and just not do nothing and read my word but you talk about that hoarding yes. right so yeah whatever god give us to do whether it's your money your talent your t what is it time talent treasure whatever ta money yeah so all that yeah so thank you shelly yeah i got to focus or on just talk to somebody in walmart right <laughs> just taking some time to, yes because that, i, I got what you're saying i was i was in alabama and i i was wearing it was chilly so i was wearing an Auburn sweatshirt and this woman walked by me and my sister and I are together and she said she looked at my sweatshirt and she said is that the only thing the, the reason that you're wearing that is that the only thing that was in your closet she had on an Alabama shirt <laughs> and I said to be honest I bought this shirt to wear to my brother's wake because he was a huge Auburn fan. And my sisters and I decided to wear Auburn attire to his wake. And she, of course, her whole demeanor changed. And she said, and so we, what we started to talk about was how to comfort each other in a time when you've lost someone. And she was saying, you know, like her brother, and my, my other sister, who is a huge Alabama fan, she's like, I only, I had to borrow the shirt. I didn't even buy it. So it was just really a conversation. We got into a conversation that was really about 
comforting people and understanding that we have to remember the times, the good times that we had with them when they were here. So uh, it, it's just to say that there's so many things, so many ways that God presents opportunities for us to give of our time, of our energy, of so many different ways. And we just have to be receptive and know that it's from him. Because walking away, you know, I could talk to people in Walmart and, you know, and she was like, G actually gave my sister and I a hug because it was something that was needed, right? And she's like, my name is Stephanie. So in my head, and she was like, I, I know this is why God sent me to Walmart, just so I can meet you guys. Because, and that's just it. You got to really hone in on those opportunities that God presents for you and embrace it and recognize. That's the key. The little things, you got to really recognize the little thing that he, the little things that he puts in front of you and honor him in those ways. And don't be scared because he always send help. <laughs> Yeah, because you know me. Yeah, you don't don't be afraid. There's nothing to be. I mean, it's he. If for me, I'm like he gave me the gift. Like, what do I gotta be scared of? Like, if I fail, he's still gonna be like, great job. I tried. The worst part is not doing it and then watching your gift become somebody else's treasure mm -hmm. and you're upset. Yeah, I ain't giving up that. Sorry, not not. You know what I mean, <laughs> like I cannot. Like I refuse to have to watch somebody else. Right. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, I just, I but, just <laughs> what did Catherine, Catherine Coleman say? I do not want to grieve the Holy, the Holy Spirit. Spirit ever, ever. Right. Because I know that's one of my gifts and everything. Right. It, I'm being led that way, led in that way by the Holy Spirit. And I don't what go back. What you mean? Like, no. Then you walk past people and you can feel it. And you're like, I remember when that was me. No, we're not doing that. <laughs> I remember I had that relationship. Right. Yeah. I messed it up because I, I was trying to be Natalie. I kept trying to drive and he was like, you know what? Forget it. Mm -mm. But he's not going to say that though. Really? Right. You would have to physically, you would have to give it up. That's the beautiful part, right? You have to relinquish it. He's not going to give up on you. You have to give up on him. Mm, God, so good. Hey, Carol. <laughs> Did you want to... Hey, um, Hi. Yeah, this this the, the we keep the same link. So uh, and and every every um Tuesday like earlier in the day I'll put a reminder. So for those y'all who are watching, if you don't know how to join the Zoom, it's on the reminder link, and it's also in the featured section, featured mm -hmm. chats. Yeah, so you can yeah. always find the Monday link, the Tuesday link, and the only one that doesn't have a Zoom link is Thursday lives because that's a different a little bit different program, but um. But yeah, every anybody can come on up. And Carol, what you got, Carol? How you doing? I'm good. I was gonna ask, what was the scripture? What did I? What? Oh, Isaiah 40 verses one through eleven, well, one through twelve. Okay, right. thank you. Sure. There you go. Yeah. Um, we've kind of shifted all around, right? <laughs> that that whole scripture, but um, the focus tonight was. You know, because we're all preparing to soar, right? We're we're going to in this group, right? We're coming out of the wilderness. Um, a lot of us have been um, planting seeds, right? We're allowing the good shepherds who lead us, right? Um, some of us have not, and so you know, we all have to be understanding. But whatever season we're in, whatever position we're in, wherever we are, we cannot do anything without God. Period. Right? We have to make sure that. Even when we go to soar, we soar with God. When we are, when God calls us to land, we're landing on with God and on his word. We're staying firmly moving according to God's word and um, what he has told us to do. And remembering who God is, how he's brought us this far, how he has um, given us what we have. And we are reciprocating that by showing um, our flowers in our in our yards and fields. Some of us have yards, some of us have fields, some of us have countries. Yeah, mm -hmm. everybody got their own territories. But no matter what it is, we do it with God. 
Amen. Amen. Um, does anyone else have anything else they want to share tonight? Carmen, you were saying um, serving. Serving starts at home, sweetie. The the <laughs> how could God trust you with His church if you can't even take care of your home? So that 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 serving piece is forever. That's that's your practice ground, home. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I, I thought that was pretty funny. How uh, I remember those days being able to be in a taxi mom and have it and everybody want you to pick them up. But boy, I tell you, that is truly a test. And you, you, you did the right thing. I'm super pr proud of you. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. I know my husband always say when I grab my keys, he'd be like, where they mom at? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, or if there's nothing else. I'm going to close us out with Brother Paul um, in Hebrews 13, 20 through 21. Now may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from dead, brought back from the dead, excuse me, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 All right, y'all, let me, I will uh, stop the recording now, or I'll stop the live on the streets. I'll stop the recording.